So we got a good mixture of guys here. I want to say welcome. You know, obviously uh, for me, I get super excited uh, when you kind of have your first official day of preseason because it's, uh, it's the soccer side. It's the business side of doing things. We got a lot of different guys here, guys from last year, guys, new guys that are signed, guys that uh, are looking to come on this team. So it's, uh, it should be a very enjoyable time. You'll notice cameras today. We're going to have that throughout the year. There's a, a local gentleman who uh, believes in this market and believes in soccer, and he wants to uh, cover us in a lot of unique ways. Joe, once you've laid it off, bang out of there, lad. Once you've dished it off, get out of there. I'd rather have four. I'd rather have four in the That's end line. That's wrong, lads. Well, I think uh, you start with, uh, you know, the stars are here because of the evolution of prior professional teams. And, you know, I'd start with the kicks in the 70s and uh, what they brought to this community. In fact, I, I've got a poster in my room that says in 1976, uh, you know, Minnesota joined the world. And you move on to the 80s with the, the strikers and the indoor. The Thunder came along in the 90s. And, and all of those teams brought something unique and special to this community that uh, I think will always be there. And unfortunately, when, when it doesn't quite click or it didn't work, um, you know, it, it, it went away. I think there was always a feeling of something was missing in the community. And one of the things that happened with the Thunder when it went away, the National Sports Center and the league itself kind of stepped and said, we need to keep soccer going in this market. And for the last two years, you know, a lot of special people said, listen, soccer is growing. It's becoming more relevant. It's a great sport. And, uh, you know, that's really why we're here today. And that's why we have the NSC Minnesota Stars. And it's really, you know, it's a, it's a combination of what's happened in the past. And, uh, you know, now with us being in the NASL, it's kind of uh, pretty cool that, you know, I started talking about, you know, the kicks. And, and now we're actually the team playing in that league. The reality is I want to get the best players possible. That is my job. My job is not to just put Minnesotans on a roster. My job is to give, uh, you know, some relevancy to Minnesota soccer by taking what the global picture is, to your point, and putting those players on the field so we have a great product. I mean, you've seen it all from the Thunder's existence to now last year the NSC Stars, and now this year we're on, operated by the league, right? Yep. You've kind of seen the changes. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. I don't you know I don't know how that side of things is going to affect it. You know, I think that we'll obviously we'll just go about our business the way we always have and. You know, I think that it's going to be a much smoother operation because everyone's going to have, you know, a good year under their belt. I think Manny's going to do a great job as he did last year, and you know, we'll have a better jumping off point though than we did last year because last year was a little bit hectic with the forming of the new team, mm -hmm. kind of late. And uh, you know, but again, we've got a lot of a lot of new faces in camp, so it'll be a, it'll be a good challenge. How old good. are you? I'm 36. What, what keeps you coming back? Uh, good question. You know, I, I took two years off, actually. I um, retired from the Thunder back in 2007, after that season. And then um, and then the new team form, and I worked, I actually worked upstairs for the National Sports Center for two years, full time. And then uh, the team was formed, and so I, I decided it would be, talk to Manny at length last year before the season. And uh, just decided it would be a, a good try to come out. And, good idea to come out and give it a shot. Come out of retirement and try playing again. And Were you the starting keep last year? I was. We actually started out with a different guy and he tore his ACL in the first game. So then I took over for the remainder of the season. And um, Ended up finally getting my form about mid-season and ended up having a good rest of the year. But uh, it's going to take you half the season to get your form this year. No, it shouldn't. I hope not. First and foremost, as a group, uh, I don't care when we step on the field, any team we're playing, we have to make sure, from our forwards to midfield defenders to goalkeeper, that we're going to be organized and compact. All right, make sure we're organized and compact. That means. 11 players are always recovering, okay? When we are finished with an attack or we lose the ball in a bad spot, 11 players are fighting to get behind the ball. I'll talk about it a little more before our first game, but if you think about it, even up high, if that player is just trying to recover and it makes their player just go a little bit more to the outside, a little bit more to the outside, by the time it gets to Matty or Joe for a shot, the angle might be two yards difference. That's the difference between a goal and not a goal. Some of the lads are coming in who have experience. Some of the lads have no experience in the league. They have to understand what it is to play at this level. 
the other lads have to fit into our, our culture. And I think that's the key thing, it's a culture. So we have a culture here that we, we um, sort of develop and the new lads have to fit into our culture. The players really merged and, and, and gelled well last year at the end of the season. And so we're trying to build that into, into our tradition and, and, and really trying to build on the name of the stars and the colors and the badge and, and show people not just internally ourselves, but you know, people in this community that, that this, is, this is a professional team and this is what we're trying to establish here. We'll hit the ground running this year. Well, yes, we will because we've got 9, 10, 11 guys returning who understand how the boss works and how I work. So there's a, there's a, you know, comfort is not always the greatest thing, is it? Comfort can lead to bloody sitting on your ass and doing anything, you know, just sitting there. But there's a level of comfort which, which creates confidence within the guys who have came back. So the expectation and, and the knowledge, knowing what we've got to do, is there. You see, I just finished my first winter up here and Seems like it's never gonna end. I thought we were through with this snow and stuff about two weeks ago, and the next thing you know, it snows six inches. So, can't wait for the sun to come back out so I can get back out to the pool. You were born and raised in New Mexico? Yeah, born and raised. Went to high school there. We added Neil to our two bedroom, and right now we put him up in a, a closet, and he gets kind of offended and sensitive when you call it a closet. It's his room, but it's his home, so. And there's three of you guys? There's three of us living in there, but it's a lot bigger of a space than we were living in last year, so. Uh, it's got a nice view overlooking the pool, which we hope to make it take advantage of in the summertime. So you do this uh, because you all like hanging out together, or you do this because this is what you can afford? A little bit of both. If you would have asked me, coming from New Mexico, I never ever would have spent a day of my life in Minnesota. But uh, being the way that the game is in America, you know, you have to kind of take any opportunity that you can. So uh, I ended up in Minnesota because Amos McGee took me to Argentina for the Maccabi games. Um, I played well down there. We won the tournament, and uh, Kevin was uh, kind of a senior member of the, the Minnesota squad at that point. And uh, they both liked me. Decided to bring me in as a rookie. Took a chance on me, and um, this is where I just I know people. I have my opportunities, and just like in any other business, it's not necessarily how good of a soccer player you are. It's just who you know and where you can find an opportunity. Is this a business first, and then the the game and the passion and the love? Is it a balance? Definitely it not. Because I guarantee you, you'll ask anyone, they're not in it for the money. So it's, uh, it's, a, um, it's a passion first, but there's definitely business elements to it too because uh, we got to live. I got to put food on my shelf. <laughs> Check uh, out the shelves right here. Yeah, this we're trying to find off. a better place for those right now, but we just moved in. I had left college. I got, I got drafted with a semester left. Um, and so when I went up to New England, I, I had an extra semester that I had to finish. And I always knew that the sooner I finished it, it would be better rather than later. It's always harder to go back later. Um, and so I saw an opportunity to, after my first season, um, originally when I had my talks with Minnesota, they would were gonna wait until May and, and I could come back and they would keep my roster spot for me. But uh, with the problems with finances and you know they, they had limited roster spots and they needed to have all their players in for preseason and they told me that they, were gonna, they weren't gonna be able to retain me. So um, you know, I looked other places, you know, I wanted to, to play in Portland for a little bit. I looked at Austin Aztecs and uh, couldn't really get a shot. Went to Israel with uh, mm -hmm. the USA Maccabi t Maccabea team, mm -hmm. um, which was a, a really fun experience. And um, I applied to med school. And uh, I was waiting to uh, hear back from there. And I got the urge to play again. You know, I always wanted to continue playing. And this was the only real outlet that I had. So Kevin told me to come up here. I lived on his couch for a month and trained. and try to get back my fitness and uh, over the course of that training, Manny came out and saw me and liked me and offered me a contract, so I, I had to take it. Did you get into med school? Yes, I did. So you got that waiting in your back pocket if this doesn't pan out? Uh, yeah, I, I took a deferral last year because mm -hmm. I found out in June that I got in um, and I was already committed to the team. This year, uh, I had to make a, a tough decision whether I wanted to play or, or go to med school and um, I decided that I wanted to play. And uh, so I'm currently writing a letter trying to find a, a second year's deferral out of, out of the med school in uh, San Antonio. And hopefully they'll grant it and uh, we'll go from there. I feel like my body only lasts so long and if I really want to become a doctor later in life, then there's always that option to go back depending on, on how badly I want it. You left, you were drafted, you had a semester hanging over your head, you went back, finished that. 
you got accepted into med school. What do your parents think about your soccer odyssey and journey? Is there, are they really just support you and they know that your body lasts a certain time and it's nice to get this out now? Is there any uh, uh, friction or is know, it pretty easy? It's been, uh, it's been a real positive experience. It's gotten a little bit tougher lately. You know, um, my parents have always supported me. They, they always have. They, they were uh, the first to brag about my successes and, you know, they can, you can tell how proud of, of me they are. Um, recently it's been tough because uh, second deferrals for med school are uh, hard to come by. And my, my dad's a doctor and my mom sees this as just a great opportunity for me and my future and doesn't want to see me pass up an opportunity like that. So, you know, as a parent, you can understand that they're a little bit, I guess to say the word would be disappointed, you know, that I, that I forego or passed yep. up on med school to, uh, to continue playing soccer. But um, I feel like it's just going to be a big test for me, you know, to see how badly I really want to go to med school, see if I can come back to that after I'm done playing, because what I want to do right now is I want to play. We've got to keep reminding ourselves pre-season is going to be ups and downs. Um, there's too many cliches, but we, we, we've got to get together. We need to play more together. How's their back line showing up? Our back line for yeah. me is a little bit flat. You know, again, Kyle and, and Jack. Jack just signed, so um, you've got to build on that relationship. We've got to look at the relationships between the wide defenders and the wide midfielders. Because right now we're awfully flat at the back. And, um, the gaps between our, our wide defenders and our wide midfielders are allowing them to get their fellas in. You know, numerically, we've got the upper hand on, the, on our defensive line. One run clears us out, and that's the chaos it can be. So, there's, there's, there's a whole stack of things to be taken care of, but let's keep it in perspective. The fun stuff is talking about the soccer stuff, and obviously for me, uh, being from here and also the head coach here, uh, my goal is to put a team on the field that's going to be competitive and win a championship. And the first challenge uh, prior to the opening kickoff and prior to even preseason starting is to put together what I, I think is a competitive team that Minnesotans will be proud of and that we will have uh, you know, a, a team that when it steps on the field, whether it be here in Minnesota or you know, in one of the other cities we play in, uh, you know, they'll wear the badge proudly. I'm coming in here to see if I can peer pressure them into coming to our home opener on April 30th. <laughs> you guys gonna be there or not? Well, we really gelled last year as a team, and I haven't, haven't had that with a team for a really long time, so it was, I think that if we continue that going for this year, it's gonna be, uh, you know, just kind of pick up where we left off kind of thing. I think it's gonna be, we're gonna be in really good shape right from the start. Off the field, we wanna build our season ticket base. We want to, create partnerships with youth clubs, with businesses, with corporations, um, and we want to sell the team. We want to find an owner that is willing to invest not just in the team, but in soccer, professional soccer in Minnesota. There's nothing like uh, going to see a live game and, and seeing the flow of a game and really getting to embrace the, uh, the challenges that not only one game provides, but an entire season of a team trying to, uh, to win one, a championship. Two, three, four. We need to produce on the field and we need to pr produce in the office. We need to get butts in the seats. We need to find partners and sponsors and to really build this up so that we are attractive for an owner. I think just to start the club, it was positive. To keep football, professional football here in Minnesota was massive. The success would be if we find a great owner for this team.